I will, I will come on to World Cup stuff in a bit, but before that, I want to know, I know it's a team game, mm -hmm. but what's it like to be the guy <coughs> to score the promotion clinching goal? Um, yes, yeah, a surreal feeling. Um, obviously, prior to that, I, I broke my foot and had to have surgery on my foot. So um, as soon as I did that, I knew kind of my, my time frame for the games coming back would have been short. Um, so I wanted to make a, a big impression as possible and you know for me to to score that goal and to have that moment and um, you know celebrate with the with the lads and it was it's a feeling I'll, I'll never forget. Do you get mobbed every time you set foot in Bournemouth Town Centre? Or <laughs> I wouldn't say mobbed but um, yeah it's, uh, it's nice to see the, the reaction from the fans and for moments like that. Fair play, you've, um, you've scored plenty of goals throughout your career but have you ever managed a hat-trick like you did in May and June? Do you know what I mean? Sort of promotion, engagement, oh, okay, yeah. qualification. Um, no, I'd say that was probably the, the sweetest one. Yeah, that was, um, yeah, that was a, an amazing moment. And, you know, for, for a person that's had my kind of, say, background in, in football and the, where I've come from and where I've started and where I've now got to, um, yeah, for me to have that moment and to have that in my like career is is a moment I'll never forget, and I feel like I've worked relentlessly hard for those moments, and now you know it's it's about keeping going and 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 making the most of it. Do you mind looking back, telling us about your journey? Because we're so used to seeing uh, the tradition, the what's become a sort of traditional academy <coughs> into first team story. Your, mm -hmm. Yours was the other end of the spectrum, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, so it's. I won't bore you to death with it, but it's um, no, it's I, st I started in in non-league, um, essentially made it to Yeovil in the Championship, spent two seasons there, um, then I went out to Norway, uh, didn't have the most successful time there, and then found myself back in non-league. So that was a real, you know, eye-opening experience. Thinking I've kind of, I've ruined my chance, and um, for me at that moment in time, I had to to work harder than I've ever, you know, worked and I think that put me in a great place and knowing that I had that fire inside me and to, to keep going and I wanted more from myself and you know, I did stupid amounts of hours to, to improve and try to be the fittest and strongest version of myself and uh, yeah, I've essentially made it back into the football league and from then it's just been, you know, an upward trajectory because I've, you know, I've carried that, that mindset and that work ethic along with me the whole way. Having made it into the championship, why did it go wrong? Um, at the start, with with the oval, yeah. um, it's, it's hard to say. Obviously, when you when you at a non-league club, and you know that was my first taste of professional football. You know, training full time and um, being a part of a, a setup in in that sense. Um, and yeah, it was it was kind of tough I think I struggled with a couple of injuries at first because maybe I wasn't accustomed to the load of, of training and games and but I think coming away from that you know we Yeovil was a squad maybe that shouldn't have maybe been there at the time you know we we weren't blessed with the big budgets that all the other teams were with in, in that league and I know that that says nothing about you know how you should perform but um yeah, we, we have essentially got relegated and, you know, it was, it was a tough season, but I think a lot of the players took a lot from that season and, um, yeah, it's, I couldn't really put it down. Uh, maybe I was young, naive and lacked experience and, and maybe awareness of what I needed to bring myself and I feel like mentally and physically I've worked hard from that stage to, to improve on all aspects. Not many British players head off to, to Norway, that, mm -hmm. you know, that impressive to take yourself out of that comfort zone what you know what was your thinking behind it and you know you said it, it wasn't the greatest time but what did you take from it oh, I took I took everything from it you know it's I think once you you get to a point where you've made a sacrifice of going going somewhere and you know that you know it can go one or two ways um, it's it was real I wouldn't say make or break but it, it was it was generally that um, I had to I had to do well out there and ultimately I, I didn't and for, for me to to say that 
I learned that I had to take responsibility for, for myself and, and how I wanted to go about my career and what I wanted from my career. Um, so, yeah, on the football inside, it, I, I may have failed. Um, but on a, on a personal note, it made me hungrier than ever. And it gave me a real ambition to, to really, you know, not let things pass by me. I, I wanted to make the most of, of a football career because, you know, I was, I was lucky to be in that place at, um, from the start. And uh, for me to obviously get my second chance in the, the AFL once I, I did return, was I wasn't going to let it pass by me this time. Can you, I mean, a lot of times in a story like this, we, people in my position, we'd ask, um, you know, what was the lowest moment? Did you ever think of chucking it in? I, I wonder, though, about the moment where, do you remember a particular moment where you, I don't know, looked in the mirror, had a word with yourself, or, or spoke to someone who said, come on, you've got a real chance here, you need to change this, and change that. Was there like a sliding doors moment? Um, I'd probably say there, there was multiple. Um, you know, it's obviously having, the start into my professional career that, that I did um, didn't help. You know, you kind of, I've always um, had a lot of confidence in myself, but you know, once, once you go through a lot of setbacks and a lot of, a lot of failures, you kind of, a lot of doubt creeps in. And, and it was, I think from that stage, it was, it was almost, so I wouldn't say maybe something just clicked in me saying I, I had to, I had to be more aware and I had to have more of a more of a mental capacity for for this all kind of stuff and I had to improve on that side and for me from that personally I I had to you know improve my mental side I had you know I read countless books I saw countless people um, and to improve on that side of my game and you know I knew physically I, I could I could improve so I worked on I worked on everything and just trying to be the best version of myself and yeah it was I think it was just down to a moment that some, something just clicked and I thought you know I've got to make the most of this. Oh, well done, keeper. Mm. I remember down mm. in Southampton, Ricky Lambert, a decade or so ago, had been doing pretty well in the lower leagues, and it mm -hmm. was Alan Pardew who said, "Come on, if you if you just do this, this, and this, you can go all the way." Was there yeah. was there someone who said to you, you know? who first put the idea of Premier League and World Cup, sort of that sort of level in your mind? Um, no, I'd say, I'd say I've, I've always had that in my mind from the start. You know, as, as a young lad, you always dream of, you know, playing in the Premier League, playing at a World Cup. And I think it's, it's always stuck with me. Um, you know, I believe a lot in, in destiny and I genuinely believed my destiny was to be a footballer. And regardless of, you know what kind of walk of life I was I was living before I become a footballer. I always knew if if I worked hard enough, I, I could get there. Um, and ultimately, I I needed a slice of luck. Um, there's a lot of luck involved in in football, and you know, Troy City give me that that slice of luck that I needed it for a, for a platform to to show what I could do. And um, and then yeah, the rest the rest is history, I guess. If it had been a Hollywood story, of course you'd have. You'd have had the, the setback after around Norway, and then it would all be upward from there. But yeah. Was it um, the Gillingham game? Do you mind telling yeah. me about that? Yeah. So um, obviously had a a skull fracture. Yeah, which wasn't um, nice. Yeah. So uh, the Gillingham game. Yeah. Um, obviously prior to doing that, I was you know doing well in the Barnsley team and. Uh, Essentially, we got promoted that year anyway, so it was, it was always nice. But um, yeah, it was a massive scare for myself, for my family, you know, to go through such a, for a period on an up tra trajectory to come back down almost to reality of, of where that, you know, if I could maybe play football again. Um, it, was, it was a tough one to take. And, you know, at this, obviously at the time I was doing well and the team was flying and, I think it was a lot of uncertainty around that for me. I had to spend a lot of time at home doing nothing because I had to obviously recover and you know just let things settle and um, yeah. But I think going through those moments only only make you stronger. And you know I saw countless um, consultants and and, and medical professions um, 
to give me the go ahead and, and once I got the go ahead it was it was full systems go again. It really was. Can you I mean the first game back and the fir first time the ball goes up in the air. Yeah. How did you approach it? Um yeah, it was I was another moment where I had to you know, I, I can't necessarily remember the game, but I remember coming on as a sub and first thing I knew it was a goal kick. It was coming to me. Um and yeah, I was just thinking before before the, the ball was even kicked back, I'm this is this is kind of the moment that's gonna define the rest of my career. Um it's either I, I give this my all or you know, I, I don't and then I think, you know, if I if I couldn't give that moment everything, a lot would have passed me by in my career and I wouldn't have, have been at this moment right now. Who's to say that is the case? But you know, it's as soon as I saw the ball go up and it was coming my way, I thought to myself, I've got to go 100% and off. And, and, you know, I jumped and headed the ball and, yeah, crowd gave me a big cheer and, and that, that was it, yeah. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Look, I know footballers don't like looking back, so thanks for talking us through all It's that. okay. I mean, in these moments when you do look back, do you allow yourself a pat on the back? Do you allow yourself to feel pride in, in how you've approached it and what you've achieved? Um, I do in certain occasions, but not. It's not often that I will. I look back. Um, I think for me, I'm a very humble and, and grounded lad, and I know I know what I've done to get to this point, um, and, and obviously where I've come from. It's, but for me now, I, I my sole focus is is forward. I, I've got so much I want to achieve in in football, and um, I'm on. I'm on the path and you know, I, I believe no one can stop me and that's, that's the way I, I feel about my life and, and football and you know I, I give everything to this and um, yeah it's, some could say it's a lot um, but you know I, I love what I do and obviously being from uh, you know the side of, of football where I've come from it's this is, this is everything to me and I've, I've put so much into it and I want to I make the most of everything. I won't, I won't let it pass me by. And, you know, while you're talking, we're seeing some guys who've come through the academy era going in and out and mm -hmm. things. These pampered youngsters who have everything <laughs> on a plate. You know, are there ever times when they're moaning in the dressing room that their boots aren't warm enough or, you know, the food isn't quite what they're after mm -hmm. and you sort of stand up and go, let me just tell you a story? <laughs> yeah, there's been, there's been plenty of moments like that and, you know, I love to... To have have that side to me, you know, I've I've been lucky enough to to share dressings with with players who have not quite had the same story, but come from similar stories to me. And um, you know, I believe it's it's a it's a special kind of place to be in because you're not, you know, you were never expected to be here, and you, you're here on sheer determination and hard work and persistence, and you haven't necessarily come through an academy where they've had everything. You know, put on a plate for them, and you know they've essentially been travelled here and there, and everything's been accustomed for them to succeed. And whereas, you know, you look at my side of it, I've had to work and you know work hard and play football on the side of that, and it's it's obviously a lot harder than I would say. But no, it's sometimes you do you look at these lads and think they've they've got the world on their shoulders already, and. Um, there's so much potential that they could achieve and sometimes it maybe just needs a push to or a little bit of a humbling to to keep them on track good on you Zoe's going to get cross with me because i'm going on for far too long <laughs> um you did mention work there do you mind telling us about your you know the average day when was it lifeguard yeah that, that they didn't seem the most straightforward days no nah, not necessarily no so um we had like a a work rotation so most of the most of the days I'd be you know getting up at five o'clock um, going to the gym uh, opening up at six o'clock um, letting everyone in at half six and you know and then I'd finish maybe three o'clock um, straight after three o'clock I'd, I'd do a session in the gym and then around uh, five o'clock I'd leave uh, if I had a training day, uh, leave for Truro, which was, you know, at least an hour and a half away. Um, you know, maybe get there for seven, 
come back and it'd be you know 11 o'clock and then I'd go again the next morning and yeah those those were the kind of relentless kind of hours and yeah you had you had to do but you know I I knew I had to do that I knew I had to to work hard if I wanted to achieve and yeah it was it was tough but you know once you have a passion and, and a love for something you know you're, you're willing to do that especially having come through all that what did it mean to you to not have to wait too long to score on your Premier League debut because a lot of players have to wait a long time for their first Premier League yeah. you know between debut and, and mm -hmm. first goal so what, what did that mean for you scoring on your Premier League debut yeah, it meant it meant everything. You know, I felt like it was. I say that I think I say this a lot, but it was like a combination of all the hard work and and the graft I've put in to get get me to this point, and um, for me to you know score on my debut. And yeah, I just I just felt all I needed was an opportunity. I just needed one sight on goal. You know, I have bundles of confidence in myself, and you know it's. As soon as I knew that ball got crossed in and I knew I was in a position to head of that ball, I knew it was a goal straight away. And yeah, for me to get that so early in, in Premier League football is, is amazing and something that I took great confidence from. And as we sit here now, you're a Premier League player, you're about to go off, line up alongside the likes of Gareth Bale in a World Cup. Mm -hmm. Does this all just feel normal now or are there times when little memories just sort of float in and you break out in a big grin? Um, yeah, I'll be honest, like, it all feels, it all feels normal, but, you know, I do sometimes have, have those moments where I think, God, I've, like, I've, I've managed to get here, it's amazing, but, um, yeah, like, I'm a very, you know, like I said before, I'm a very ambitious person, and I don't like to get distracted by stuff that would, you know, not, not necessarily take my attention away from what I want to achieve, but sometimes it is good to look back and, you know, almost redirect yourself and and to think like yeah like I, I can keep going like I've, I've managed to get this far there's what can stop me now and um, you know like I said I've, I've had countless people count me out through my career you know said I'd, I'd never reached the Premier League I've never go to a World Cup and you know maybe they would they would have been right but I didn't let them be right in, in my own head and um, I made sure that you know what I wanted to achieve. I, I've put my my full focus and, and dedication and, and my life to to get to this point.